Now, if you're watching from home and only concerned about the road ahead, here's where you might wanna turn up the volume. Our current state public health emergency and COVID executive order expire on March 31st. I will renew the public health emergency for another 30 days because it allows us to take action quickly if conditions take a turn for the worse and allows us to continue to access the hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funds that are helping the hardest hit Hoosiers weather this lingering storm. The current COVID restrictions will be extended as is through April 5th because of all the out of state visitors we have in Indiana right now. And most importantly, to continue to give Hoosiers with comorbidities the opportunity to schedule or get vaccinated. Earlier today, our federal partners told states to expect large increases in the amount of vaccine that will be flowing to us beginning the last week in March. So on Wednesday, March 31st, we'll plan to open up vaccine eligibility to all Hoosiers 16 years and older anticipating we'll receive additional doses of all three vaccines. Already we've nearly 500 sites available throughout the state that are inoculating Hoosiers and we'll expand our reach by implementing a large employer vaccination program that has been in the planning stages for weeks now to provide an even more convenient way to get vaccinated. We'll schedule additional mass vaccination clinics in April, just like we hosted in Gary and Sellersburg and Indy and this upcoming weekend in South Bend. We'll continue sending our mobile units to targeted areas throughout the state to assure that our distribution is fair and equitable in all corners. Also, starting on April 6th, all decisions about venue capacity will be in the hands of local officials. The State Department of Health will continue to provide county metrics each week, color-coded, which are key to knowing whether virus levels are increasing or decreasing locally. But the metrics will be guidelines for local consideration regarding size limits for each social gathering. Customers in restaurants, bars, and nightclubs will no longer be required to be seated. Six feet of spacing between tables and other seating will still be recommended, as is spacing between non-household parties. Social distancing is still recommended. All businesses should maintain a COVID response plan that provides COVID safeguards. Hospitals may return to a normal state when scheduling non-emergency procedures and surgeries were occurring. Our best data is that close to 90% of all schools are operating in person and many of the remainder have hybrid schedules. Please know our departments of education and health will work together to update health guidance in preparation for the next school year. Thankfully, all our teachers have the opportunity to be vaccinated now and our schools are receiving hundreds of millions of dollars for COVID expenses. So it's my hope and expectation that our K through 12 schools will provide full time in-person instruction for the 2021-2022 academic year using what they've learned and with the additional local, state, and federal resources provided. Also, on April 6th, the face covering mandate will become a state mask advisory. Although face coverings will remain mandatory in all state buildings and facilities, 
and in all vaccination and COVID testing sites until further notice. K through 12 schools will continue under current face covering requirements through the remainder of the 2020-2021 school year. As always, local governments, businesses, and other entities may impose more stringent guidelines, such as choosing to keep mask wearing mandatory in their facilities. So whether that is a bank branch lobby on the factory floor or a county courthouse or city hall, they retain the authority to make decisions about COVID restrictions for their operations and should be afforded the respect, compliance, and understanding of all who visit them. When I visit my favorite restaurants or conduct a public event, I will continue to appropriately wear a mask. It's the right thing to do. Hoosiers who take these recommended precautions will help us get to what I hope is the tail end of this pandemic. Until then, please remember, if you test positive, isolate. If you are a close contact of someone who is COVID positive, follow CDC guidelines and quarantine. If you're sick or symptomatic, don't go to work or any place else for that matter. Free COVID tests are available throughout the state, so get tested. Wash your hands frequently and please, please be cautious about contact with seniors and those with high risk medical conditions. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue to do these few things, the light at the end of the tunnel becomes brighter and brighter buying tickets for March Madness games, planning for all our local fairs and festivals or the greatest spectacle in racing itself tells me that all those life delights I once took for granted are coming back online. It's up to each and every one of us to do our part to stay on our course. Thank you and have a good night.